Have you ever wondered how, if you're only looking at the next time box or iteration, how can you make sure that the overall design and architecture of what you're building hangs together? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Hi and welcome to Safe in the Real World. I'm Ahmed Said, and today we're going to be talking about the role of the system architect in Safe. The system architect sits at the program tier on the safe big picture and is shown as a trio of key program roles as he or she is going to need to work really closely with the release train engineer and the product manager. And as you may recall the, from previous videos, the release train engineer is a person that supports and facilitates and enhances all that cross team communication to enable the agile release train to deliver on its commitments. And the product manager is a person that defines what and when and why the Agile release train does what it is supposed to be doing. Now, let's just take a step back and have a look at what the challenges are of the system architect. Now, imagine you have a number of teams working to deliver on a single vision. There's almost an infinite number of ways to solve any problem. And if you've got 12 teams working on a problem, the chances of them coming up with an approach that's compatible and works harmoniously across all the teams is pretty unlikely. So all the teams need to agree on an approach and a common understanding of how they wish to do things, how they wish to architect or design the solution if you like. And that's the role of the system architect. They need to support the teams so that they can agree on the technologies that they're going to use, how the solution and the components interact at a high level. They need to understand any system constraints that they have. They also need to understand any functional uh, requirements that they may have. For example, they may have certain security needs. The data may need to be encrypted or they may have a certain number of concurrent users that need to be supported. Right. We also need, in addition to having clarity on the overall approach at a high level, we also need a greater level of detail just before it is needed. This is what we call the last responsible moment. So let's take an example. Imagine we're creating a building. We, we obviously want to know whether it's a home or an office, whether it's a five-story building or a 20-story building. And we need to know this up front prior to putting in the foundations because we can't iterate over the foundations easily. It's not easy to update the foundations from a five-story building to a 20-story building. There's just too much work and too much what we might refer to as regret cost. Now to be sure that we make sure we can uh, eliminate and reduce this, uh, this unnecessary work, we need to be clear on what we, what we need to understand and design up front. And so this is something that we need to put into our what, what's known as the architectural runway. So where things we can't iterate over, we want to make sure we have those in the uh, architectural runway. Whereas things that we are happy to iterate and increment over, we can, we can do those, elaborate on those just in time at the last responsible moment. For example, we, we will need to know uh, the size and scale of the building, but we don't need to know about the fittings in the bathroom or the kitchen up front, where the electrical sockets are going to go, what kind of marble we're going to be using in the foyer, etc, etc. So these details we can work out at the last moment using our own analogy. Okay, so as I've said, the system architect is responsible for maintaining the architectural runway. The two elements to that, we need to know a, uh, have a high level overview of what we need, the kind of technologies and interactions, the key architectural requirements as I've already discussed. Um, the other thing is, as I said, the, we need to provide the Agile teams with enough detail just in time so that the teams are able to deliver on their requirements and complete any detailed designs that they need for the user stories in time. There are now two gotchas that I want to talk to you about that typically occur that we need to be, uh, we need to be careful of, uh, about. So the first one is what I call vertical drift. Okay. This I've seen what happens is that where you've got architects and they're actually going too deep. They are not just staying at a high level of architecture, they're actually dropping down too early, too deep, 
too soon and they actually try and end up doing like what I would consider to be almost a detailed design. Now that's too much information so that is one of the challenges that you need to be careful of. The other gotcha that I want to talk to you about is what I call horizontal drift. Now that's quite different. That's where you've got the, um, the, uh, the system architect is working at the PI level but the detailed designers are not just looking at the work that's needed for the current sprint they're looking far far ahead as well that that distinction between the high level architecture architectural runway and the detailed design is lost and the designers may be trying to design things too far ahead as well so that's also another gotcha we need to be careful about so be be careful of the vertical drift where the system architects going too deep and also the horizontal drift where you've got people working at the team level trying to go into too much detail across multiple sprints in advance hope you find that useful that's all we've got for the system architect role uh, today uh, do remember to subscribe to safe in the real world channel and look forward to seeing you next time thanks very much